Hey guys, welcome to another review. I am Mr. P, uh, and today I'm going to be doing a nice little RDA that I've received from uh, Grant or Big G from the Facebook group. Um, he said to me, "Pop round, and uh, I've got something for you." So I said, "Okay." Um, and yeah, what he gave me, Mutation X, is what he's given me to play with. Um, so that is what I'm going to be doing a review of today. Um, a little bit of info first of all: 22 mil RDA. Spot on, uh, love it. Um, dual caller, dual call, a sort of RDA cloud chasing beast from what I've seen, you know, before Grant saying I've got one for you. Um, so obviously, well up for that. Price from Big G, I paid nothing to give it to me for free for review, so just bear that in mind. But if you want to buy one of these, it's going to cost you uh, 20 quid delivered to your door. I do want to point out, guys, this is a genuine. This is not a clone, okay? This is a genuine Mutation X designed in USA, manufactured in China. Um, so it looks like, finally, someone has sort of done what me and Worm suggested a long time ago, which was actually design something and get it built to good quality in China where they can push them out really quick. Um, so that's what I'm doing today. In fact, here she is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck it down on the table very quickly to have a little close up, show you about, show you sort of about the atomizer and give you a little look at it, uh, and then obviously back up to me afterwards for a nice little chat. Right, guys, close up of the Mutation X. Um, so I'm going to delve straight into it. Firstly, this did come sort of, sort of wrapped, um, but you know I me, mean, I've been at this already. So um, firstly, nice little presentation box, in fact, very nice. Um, so let's so open her up and we'll pop the dripping out here. Uh, just stick that next to me for a second, in fact. Stick it down there so you can see it. Um, so, you know, a bit of information in there. I'm reading this upside down, um, but I'll go for what I can. If you can see that, it says um, 18 air holes for maximum airflow. Fully adjustable top cap uh, with airflow and um, I can't even read it. Control tabs, two more holes in a negative post and two and a half mil hole in the center post. Um, so sweet, that saves me going into that. Uh, and then very much like the UD stuff, a bit more information on the back here, nothing sort of relevant though. And then in the back you've got uh, a little screwdriver which did actually come in that with this which is the drip tip, we'll get into that in a minute uh, and then we have a few o-rings there which is always good to get spare o-rings and right at the bottom here we have got three positive, or not positive, but three of your screws that go into your uh, positive and negative holes so good to see them screws in there to be honest with you now you know every atomizer comes on these little blue screwdrivers nowadays and let's face it, none of us ever use them so let's stick that there now let's get on to this little beastie. Um, first of all, I think I will go into the drip tip. Um, it matches lovely. Okay, it's a cool looking drip tip. You can see it there. Um, but main thing that impresses me is look at the bore on that bad boy. It's got a massive bore, obviously for maximum airflow. So for once, I won't have to use a specific drip tip if I want to chase clouds with a dripper designed to do that. Um, so that's cool. Um, get in, let's have a little look around the body. Sorry for the glare, guys, but so there we go. We've got nine holes there, and then opposite side, nine more staggered in stacks of three quite close together. Don't know the specific width of these holes, but they're bigger than one mil, put it that way. Um, on the bottom, mutation X, and we've got a serial of 4713. Um, so, yep, yeah, not a clone, guys. That serial is relevant, 4713. Um, 510, standard 510 fitting. And in the bottom, you have your positive contact. If this glare decides to bugger off, positive contact just there. Silver plated that positive contact for maximum um, conductivity. So, I like that. O rings on the bottom. They're fairly snug, not super snug. Um, and then top cap. Outer ring, really. Um, there's not massive amounts to go into, like say you've got your, uh, your air holes just there and obviously on the opposite. Um, there is a specific way for this to go on purely because, I mean, you look at the height of the air holes, you stick that on the wrong way and your air hole's going to be all mishmash. So it does have guides for a specific way for it to go on, which is that way. More gap at the bottom because you've got monumental well in there, but we'll get into the deck in a second. So that's that. Um, top cap. A single eye ring feels nice and tight, you know. Not, not you can adjust it still, um, but that does lead to other complications, which I'll get into. Um, you know, it's, it's it's nice, sort of snuggish fit. 
I haven't had it pinch on me, so I do like that. Uh, inside, we've got a domed top cap for increased flavour, which we're obviously all big fans of. And then you've got, I don't really know what you're going to call these, but your airflow control slats, if you like. So obviously the idea is you sort of grab your top cap, pop it on, and then as you're vaping, hopefully you'll be able to make it so you might be able to make it out a bit easier if I do that. And then as you're vaping, you sort of turn it to open or to close your airflow. So obviously if I do that, we've got such a tiny little hole open now. Um, and obviously that opens it all the way up. So a fairly easy design. Uh, much like the tube up here uh, for heat displacement, so making sure you're not getting loads and loads of heat up and through your drip tip. Um, I like that as well. I said that in a tub video. I really like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, standard 510 fit in there and drip tip, and every drip tip I've tried has fitted just fine. So there's that. Um, now getting into the deck, double O-ring affair. You got a little lip around the bottom for your top cap to sit onto, and then you have got your three posts. Central is positive. The outsides are negative. They're actually milled into the base on this. I'll try and get that without the glare. Always stainless steel, so it's always shiny, but they're milled into much like the new tobe. Um, so, obviously, one, it's going to give you a better connection, and two, more importantly, no matter what you do to them, really, they're not going to suffer uh, sort of death. Basically, um, you'll see I've got a couple of coils in this, and that's purely because I didn't want to re wick it on camera. Basically, um, let's see if we can get this on camera. Bloody light, there we go. Put my finger over it for a second. Um, there's your negative holes. And your positive hole, your negative holes are two mil, and your positive is two and a half mil. So obviously designed for your thicker wires and your lighter res builds to be in there, um, which is well, it's a good thing. Let's face it, if it's it can't be too big, can it? But it can be too small for your wires. Um, now the only main issue I found with this is when you put this on here, if it's on a mod, you go to adjust your airflow, and you'll actually spin this out of body on the O-rings. I think the O-rings could do with being very fractionally tighter. I mean, don't be wrong, it's not easy to pull this out. But for when you've got e-liquid involved in the situation, it's kind of lubed up, it'd be nice for it to be fractionally tighter. Let me bring you in a bit closer. It might make life a bit easier with the lighting. Um, but there you go. So that's that. Phillips heads. Now, I haven't found these, these are, you know, anything wrong with them, to be honest with you. I know I've seen a few people say they've crossed them and whatever else, but no, I haven't found it to be any issue whatsoever. Um, and I find they hold really nice and tight. Positive contact hasn't moved at all, and I've, I've hammered it down. You know, really yanked some um, some wire in there and tightened it up quite hard. Which my Zenith and a lot of other atomizers, the positive posts start to spin because insulation's gone. Um, I haven't had any of that happen on here, and you have got a really generous drip well in there, um, which obviously big big fan of. Let me bring you right in down here. I'm just going to chuck some cotton in this really quickly on camera. Like I said, I didn't want to do a full re -wick and I chose not to basically, purely because, uh, well, I don't really want to. <laughs> um, so, just pop your cotton in and then give it a little pull through. A little twist maybe might help the situation. Um, it depends on what you plan on doing with this, guys. If you plan on using this as a kind of a standard, normal dripping atomizer, normal resistances or, you know, not fully open, uh, get that cotton in there like you usually would. If you plan on chasing clouds big time, you know, really low res, then I would strongly suggest uh, that you uh, pack that cotton in some cores a little bit tighter than you may feel comfortable doing, depends on what you're used to. Uh, let's face it though guys, if you see this dripper, chances are you think chasing clouds, uh, much like I did. Um, and then second one, give it a little twist. Cock! And there we go. Um, so yep, yeah, now it's just a little simple case of, let's zoom you back out a bit, um, snipping your cotton. So, one now. Uh, I don't really need to take much off the back to be honest with you, but I'll take a little bit. And there. And then obviously, rinse and repeat for this side. So, snip me cotton here. Nearly got my fingers then. Snip me cotton there. And then the same on the back. <clears throat> Give it a little pull. No big deals. Um, let me just grab my trusty little screwdriver um, for cotton tacking purposes 
Uh, I've said it before and I will say it again, whenever I'm doing dual coil, what I try to do is get one lot of cotton down on the side of the coil and then one through a post to the opposite side so that the wicks are joined. So what I would tend to do is tuck that down and under there. You can see it's kind of going through like so. So now the cotton from the front of this coil is going through and it's going to meet the back of this coil. Uh, and I'll do the same here. So kind of under there, get it like that and then pincer it through. So the coils, the cotton from each coil is all joined um, purely because I find that it greatly benefits wicking, um, you know, especially when dual coils and the penult resistance you're using. Uh, and then tuck that down there. Give that a little pull, that little pull. That's a job done if you ask me. Give them a little prime. Now, you may notice that there is a lot of coils going on here. Bigger micro than I'm usually doing. That's a 14 wrap each side of 0.34, giving me a jewel at 0.8 ohms. Um, and I'll explain my reasoning for that briefly. It is because I wanted to be able to run this on, you know, a mech if I felt the need to and get a pretty decent vape. And I also wanted to run this on, you know, a variable voltage or a variable voltage device um, to enable me to do a bit more. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I want it to be able to be used as a standard vape and as a, a chasing vape because I find that this stripper is not getting enough praise for the flavour it produces. Um, this is a bit of what is this? This is Papa's Sweeties from Wolfram Raven E Liquid. Jason, um, lovely bloke, made that up for uh, my missus, in fact, and I've nicked it. Um, so, yep, that's what I'm vaping. If you were wondering, guys, some people ask, so you now know. Um, and then what I do is, <laughs> depends on how I'm going to vape this, but either way, this hole here, the bottom one that's going to be at the bottom, the first hole, I line that up just off centre um, to the left of my coil. So that kind of the, that, that hole there and then the sort of the central bottom one is in the middle of the coil uh, and then goes up. So basically something along them lines. It's just like that. Like so. Uh, and then obviously chuck our top cap in and we've got one air hump and I think we'll go for we'll go for meh, half of that one like so um, chuck that drip tip in there and now I'm going to go and grab a mod and I'm going to bring it back up and have a nice little vape and we'll have a little chat about this right guys back up to me um, you know, just a little rehash of bits you've just seen, but you know, like I say, 22 mil. It's got heat uh, dispersing vents at the top. It's got beefy bloody air holes. It's fully adjustable. Um, it's silver plated for 510. You know, so good conductivity. Uh, dual coil, dual coil only, which is a little bit of a shame. I do like a single coil option, but let's face it, that's not what this is about. Um, drip tip. I love the drip tip. I think that's awesome. I think it looks cool as hell, and I think the fact it's super wide bore. You know, your standard 510 drip tip would be 8.9 millimeters, which is what 510 is to the external. 8.9 millimeters. Um, typically, your internal bore would be no more than six. You'd have to usually buy anything more than six. I've got a couple of eights, but you know that's that's an eight mil bore on a standard drip tip that comes with a 20 quid dripper. Spot on. Um, like I say, this isn't a clone. This is a, a legitimate item. You know, genuine genuine article for 20 quid. You can't really mind that at all. Um, so I do love that, in fact. Um, I said in the close-up, I don't think this thing's getting as much recognition for what it can do as a standard everyday dripper. Um, because on the face of it, it's meant for clouds and clouds only. Um, but I believe that this thing has got more to provide than that. Which is why I went for this build. Um, you know, this is actually 0.8 ohms. I'm running this on the... This is on the um, IPV. Two, uh, which I stole off Grant when I was around there to, for a little lend to have a go of. Um, and you know, 28.5 watts, this is kind of what I'd use the Zenith for, as on a, on a Hanna or something, you know. And I've got to tell you, I don't think this thing's getting enough praise for the flavour it can produce. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not the best flavour I've ever had. But, I knock that down to just that one air hole. You now the draw feels about equivalent to about 2mm, 2.4mm. 
and I'm getting a very, very nice flavour. And I think people need to realise that this can do that. Not them that own them, obviously, if you own this chance, so you know this already, but the potential for a good flavour is definitely here. Um, what I like about this is that if you've got the right device to accompany this, which is why I borrowed the IPV, you can go from that flavour, junky, you know, happy, puffing away, having a good vape, to doing ridiculous clouds. And when I say ridiculous clouds, I don't mean competition clouds, but I mean clouds that, let's face it, you have to prepare for and build for. Um, without doing anything with just opening up your air holes now obviously bear in mind guys if you're if you're happily dripping around your normal juice it's probably a 12 or a 6 or something and you open it up and push up that wattage you're gonna get hurt like it's gonna hurt you um but it's definitely able to do so so i mean i think that's really really cool so i think what i'll do in fact is i'll go into my sort of six point hit list um on this and then everything sort of to be covered over the course of that I'd imagine. Um, so first of all would be looks. Now I love this I love this heat dispersing um, up here. I love the drip tip, I think that's really cool. I like the simplicity of the body, the holes in it, although it's its shining point in a lot of the cases for looks it's not great is it let's be honest with you. Um, but I mean I still like it. It just it looks like a bit of a DIY job. I think they should be a little bit further apart if I'm honest with you to give you more tailorability. Um, for me, I think this thing's a 9. I think that the holes there, it could never be a 10, if that makes any sense. Now, if they were slightly further apart, you could potentially incorporate them into a logo or some description, and that could then hide them, which would be pretty sweet. Um, but for as it is, I think it looks like a 9 to me. The drip tip on its own, though, is a 20, so, you know, I love that. Um, so, yeah, looks 9. Um, usability. Depends what you're doing, really. Um, but as an RDA, dual coil RDA, it's got a massive drip well. It's got big post holes for the for the centre. So even if you're not doing stupid low builds, but you you know you usually use a 0.32 or a, a 0.4 or something uh, wire. So you know 32 gauge, sorry, 20, 28 gauge or 26 gauge, something like that. Um, you know, there's plenty of room in there for you to do it. There's nothing obstructing you, and you don't have to wiggle stuff through. So for that. You know, that's definitely usable. Other than that, it's a dual core dripper. You stick a couple of cores in it, you've got to make sure they light evenly, and then cotton it or whatever it is you're going to do to it, uh, and puff away. Usability, I'm going to give it a 10. It's no more difficult than any other dual core RDA that's out there. Um, the only difference really comes in in your body, not in your deck, or your, even your top cap or anything else. Um, so for usability, I'm going to give it a 10. Uh, maintenance, it's, it's, it's much the same, you know, it's a 10. You've got to wash it and treat it like you would any other dual core dripping atomizer. Take the cotton out, dry burn your coils, change it. Um, I mean, obviously, if you did buy this with the sole intention of chasing clouds, building super low builds, you'll know your coils, to be honest with you. They're going to get bogged up very quickly and your cotton's going to get ruined very quickly. But if you're an everyday vapor who wants to be able to go from a nice vape, a nice vape sorry, into a, a nice cloud, um, you know, it's going to be a 10, isn't it? Um, build quality and price is what I'd do next. The build quality on it, I think, you know, for what it costs, 20 quid, we'll do price first, 20 quid delivered, it's a 10, no problem about it whatsoever. For a genuine dripper, 10. Um, the build quality, you know, in general, I think the top cap's lovely, I think the body's lovely, I think the deck's great. Uh, silver plated contact, you know. The only issue is is the O-rings. The O-rings on the body seem to be slightly looser than you'd like them to be. So when you do, it'd be nice if I could just sort of a solid fit on the bottom and just twist the top to adjust the airflow. In fact, I have to hold the body to twist the top because the O-rings are a little bit slack at the bottom. Um, and the more e-liquid that gets added to the equation, the worse it becomes to the point where you know it, it spins semi freely. It's not super spinny, but you know you put pressure on it, and it will just turn. Um, so for that, you know, it's not necessarily a massively massive bad point. It's just a couple of O-rings, but it's something to bear in mind. I'm still going to give it a 10 for build quality, purely because I think it deserves it. It's a very, very low-cost atomizer. Um, and obviously the build quality versus price, I think you're getting what you pay for and some more, to be honest with you. Um, there's not many out there like this, so it's rare and it's cheap. Well, it's not rare, is it? This blows from being produced, but it's rare among the market and it's cheap. Um, so yeah, definitely tends for build quality and price. Next would be flavour and vapour. This is going to depend heavily on what you're doing. It's going to depend on what resistance you're vaping at, 
what juice you're using, it's going to obviously for flavour, it's going to depend on what you're using to power it. Um, you know, if you're someone who's a flavour junkie, let's face it, typically you're not going to super sub iron. Um, so for that, I think it's a 10. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's, there is better out there. Um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, for the best flavour I've ever had versus the worst, it sits around an 8.5 or 9 um, at its best for me. But in flavour in general, you pick it up and go, that's lovely. You know, so I'm going to give it a 10 for that. But, you know, in the grand scheme of things, um, vapour, well, this is on what I would be a normal build for me, dual core. I would always prefer single for a normal build for me. But, that's what it's, I can do, so you know that's what's there. The vapor is more than respectable, and that's with just one of the air holes open. So, what I'll do now this is actually a cloud chasing juice that I'm sticking in here because this is a cloud chasing dripper. Now, I'm going to compare that. So what this thing can do at 50 watts, wide open. So let me just jack it up. Let's, we know the vapors are 10 already, but I just, you know, I wanted to show you what this thing could do. Um, and I'm curious for myself. So 50 watts. All you've seen me. I was just vape, flavor vaping for me, um, and I've just chucked in a cloud chasing juice and up the power. So let's give it a go. The most vapor you're ever going to get out of a stock RDA until something else comes along with that similar design. The Mephesto, the Zenith, the Amiga, they've got nothing on this. In fact, I've actually got a top cap that I custom made with a very similar design to the air holes on. Mine only has eight and they're staggered in twos. Um, but that that's customized. That wasn't made for a standard atomizer that's been mass produced. This is the most vapor you're ever going to get out of a standard RDA. That's at 50 watts, so 6.6 volts for a point eight ohm core. To be honest with you, usually for this for this kind of vapor level, you know, this kind of sorry, this kind of uh, level, I wouldn't recommend having all nine all nine holes open. To be honest with you, all nine holes open, you want to be running somewhere in the region of 100 plus watts. Um, to get massive, massive vapor and warrant having all them holes. I mean, I've just closed three of them off. And there's no real difference. Uh, it's just it's actually a nicer, nicer experience with three of them closed off because it's slightly warmer. Um, so you don't necessarily need to have it full open depending on what you're using to power this. I mean, if you've got an axis, you know, you might be closer to that region, but to be perfectly honest with you, I'm, them holes, unless you're going 0 0.06 to 0 0.09 or 0 0.1, you know, them stupid sub ohm resistances, <sighs> unless you're going down now, you don't need all nine. You really don't. Six will do. Um, I am going to go super sub ohm on this. I haven't had a chance yet, to be honest with you. I am going to go super sub ohm on this and just see exactly what this can do. If you want to see that video, it will be going on Facebook. Um, I'm interested to find out myself, I'm perfectly honest with you. Last time I did go Super Sub it was my own top cap, and the video is actually in the Mephesto clouds. I was cheating. Um, so, yeah, I was in Mephesto, just not the top cap from it. Um, that's what I'll do. You know, I might even post it to the uh, to the YouTube channel as well, just because it's a different it's a different kind of experience to get a dripper that's capable of doing this from stock. Um, so I do want to go to Super Sub I want it and see truly what it's capable of, um, but Vapor is definitely a 10. Anyone who said it's ridiculous to say that's, 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 a, that's a 100, you know, a Zenith or Mephesto. Mephesto is a good one because it does produce some epic clouds, it's just the drip tip's a bit shit, which is if it had that drip tip, wouldn't have that problem. Um, that's a great cloud chasing dripper, it produces great clouds, but 
that compared to this is like trying to compare a Nautilus to a K fund. It's just not the same. You're not in the same league. So I need to have a drink after that. You're not in the same league. Um, the capabilities of this for vapor are immense. And I believe the capabilities for flavor in this aren't being sung up enough because I think it can produce a great flavor. I was using one of my favorite juices, uh, another Wolf and Raven one earlier, and it's on par with a Zenith, if not slightly better at times. You know, there are better flavor out there than the Zenith, but let's face it, we're talking about fractions. Um, so yeah, definitely this isn't, people are seeing it and judging it before they know it, if you know what I mean. So that's why I wanted to use the IPV. I was going to put it on a mech and run a super sub and coil and go, look at this cloud, la la la. But to be honest with you, even those of us that like to do stupid massive clouds will kick back with something semi-serious. You know, even if you're a super super sub all the time, you'll still kick back with a 0.25 or a 0.4 and you'll vape there. Um, you know, personally I like a 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 in a K-Fun unless I'm using something like that, in which case, you know, I'll tend to run k on this at like 1.2, 1.4. This has the capabilities to go from the everyday vape to the ridiculous with that kind of device in seconds um, or a simple rewick will not having to change atomizers I believe this thing's very versatile so yeah great for that um, next would be overall this is my final mark and obviously out of 10 I think you can probably gather what it's gonna be from everything else I mean don't wrong the o-rings on the body are a little bit of a pain in the ass um, That's the only con I can think of, to be honest with you. It's the only that, and you know, it's not the best looking out there because of all them holes. It's kind of like a colander. But truth be told, I think the looks are quite charming. Um, and I kind of I look at it and think, you're really the first of its kind, the first sort of mass produced in China, but in a genuine, you know, the first one that's sort of taking it beyond. I know it's not the first driven atomizer that comes with them kind of holes and all that kind of stuff, but they're spec designed for cloud chasing. Um, and I haven't had one so I couldn't tell you how it compares but what I could say is that this is the first triple atom that I've had that I truly believe I can go from vaping every day to ridiculous even in a festo I can't use it every day because it's, it's not something I enjoy using every day this is different this is like a tobe on steroids and you know you've got the big post holes the contact is silver plated you've got that option to go from one to the other you've got the heat dispersing you know top cap the drip tips a big ball it's great looking stainless steel one or something like a nemesis that looks spot on um, and it's a genuine for clone money which is what we all want let's face it um, for that reason and that reason alone my new favourite dripping atomizer um, you know, it's it's just awesome. I think it's an absolute beast, and uh, I think if you don't get one, you're missing out. To be honest with you, just because of what you can do with it um, and what it can do every day for you. Um, so yeah, definitely recommend it, guys. If you if you are looking at it and you kind of think oh, get one, if you're looking at it and you feel, or if you've seen it and you think that's a load of pants or whatever, you may have thought because of how it's designed of what you all preconceptive notions are of it um, I would strongly suggest you think twice because it's a great atomizer it really is um, obviously I want to say a big thank you to a big geo grant his eBay link and obviously my Facebook group will be down there if you want to get in touch with him do either or um, he's actually very active on the Facebook group puts in a lot of effort with all the guys and gets uh, everyone as good a price as he can get um, for his for his atties and his mods so obviously big fun up to grant for providing me that uh, I've actually got a uh, another couple of bits and bobs from Grant, but I'll get onto them when I can. Um, so yeah guys, obviously, big thank you to Big G, big thank you for you guys to watching me, hope you enjoyed looking at that and you really should get one. Um, thank you very much, I've been Mr P, shall see you soon.